One day, we, the police came and told us we have 48 hours to pack one suitcase. We didn't know whether we were going on a real train or on the kettle car. And once you went on the kettle car, you know what your destiny would be. It has been said that the best classroom is at the foot of an elderly person. I know that to be true because I get to meet so many remarkable and inspirational seniors every day in court. Unfortunately, very few of them ever get a chance to tell their stories or share their wisdom. Until now, welcome to the story of my life. I was born in Vienna, Austria. I'm 92 years old and this is my life. I was the only child to a middle-class family. I had wonderful parents. We, my father had a business in Vienna and in Sofia, Bulgaria. And just by coincidence, March of 1938, when Hitler marched into to Vienna, to Austria, we were in Sofia. Life was tough. There were curfew, my father lost the business because we were Jewish, but we were put three families in one room. We only had one hour freedom a day. And because the house had no running water and no plumbing, so my job was to go to the well and bring two big buckets of water. We had no food. My mother came down with malaria. I came down very sick with whooping cough. No doctor was allowed to go to the Jew to help the Jews. My husband, unfortunately, went through much more health. He was 14 when he entered to the Auschwitz. He was separated from his sister because women were one dead to the way. And until his dying day, he could never, never find out or never found out whatever happened to his sister. Never. His brother and him stayed together. They were, they were sent they were for labor, even that he was only 14 and very malnutrition. But they sent him, they needed him, to a coal mine. Then one day, he would always say, a mean German Gestapo separated the two brothers. And that, was, I think, was the hardest time for him. He weighed 51 pounds of liberation and realizing that he was the only, only survivor. He could never, never forget the smell of burning flesh and, and the screaming of people. Can I forget? Can I forgive? Of course, if you don't forgive, you're just as mean a person. But can you forget? No, I, I couldn't forget. Uh, many times I wonder, how did I survive and not have anything to eat? I still before going to bed every night, I have to have something, a cookie, a little piece, because I don't know, maybe tomorrow I don't have anything to eat. For my, for my husband mostly, mostly for my husband, when Howard was born, because he, he'd lost all his family. So when another a son came that will carry on his name, I think that was the biggest day for him. Of course, when my second son was born a year later, I was just as happy. Uh, my, my husband and me, we always felt we have to do something with our life. If we don't, that means Hitler succeeded to, 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 to eliminate us all. I, I can only say, because what I went through, that you should be more tolerant to people. Doesn't matter their skin, the pigment of their skin, or education. Just be more tolerant to people. And enjoy life. Do the best you can. Have a purpose in life. My husband would always say there's two Ps, and I believe in that. There's purpose and pride. And enjoy it. Do the best you can, because you never know what tomorrow brings.